Hello and welcome to Musical Musings, a place where musicians at St. Thomas the Apostle Hollywood muse about music. Today's musician is David Anderson, tenor extraordinaire in the St. Thomas Choir. What brought you to St. Thomas and how long have you been there? <clears throat> I started coming to St. Thomas, I think it was about 92, 91, um, 18, 91, that is. <laughs> no, um, and it was the AIDS crisis. And, um, you know, things were just so awful then. And I, uh, I had a very good friend who had tested positive and it was kind of the first experience that I'd had with that. <clears throat> so it was devastating. So I, um, the first thing I, I kind of a gut reaction was, oh my gosh, I need to go to church. So I had not, up to that point, hadn't gone to church since I was in high school. All through college, I didn't care about, you know, I think most people probably kind of shy away a little bit during college, but I had. And so um, I was looking around and it was gay pride weekend and we went to the festival and the Episcopal church in the diocese had a booth and I was talking to the people there about it. And they said, oh, you don't, th there were a couple churches. He said, Trinity and M Melrose and St. Thomas and Hollywood said, but St. Thomas has a lot of problems, so you don't want to go there. So, of course, I knew I've got to go to St. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> and I, um, so I went, and I went alone that first Sunday, and um, I've, I've been going ever since. I remember Father Barber walking down the aisle in his, in the, it's the gold cope that, you know, that, that we have. And I was really impressed by the liturgy and, and um, it was just really, it was great. I felt at home. Wonderful. So that was, that was my gosh, almost 30 years ago. Yeah. It'll be next year. Yeah. What, um, what got you interested in the choir? What brought you into the choir? Well, another, another kind of a little defiant thing that I do, I'm kind of defiant in a way. Um, the guy who was the head of the acolytes at the time, I can't remember his name. Oh, it was Pop Miller. <laughs> he, he kept approaching me because I'd been going to church for a while and kind of just going, and he had kept approaching me about becoming an acolyte. <clears throat> and um, I kept saying, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely consider that. And so one day at coffee hour, he came up to me and he said, I am gonna, I'm going to put you on the schedule for acolytes. I said, well, you can't because I'm joining the choir. <laughs> And so at that point, I kind of had to join the choir. Right. And I'm glad I, and I'm glad I did. Because <laughs> that, was, that was like a year after. And it wasn't even a year after I started going to St. Thomas. Probably like months, just a few months after. So I've been in the choir since. Um, what is your musical background? What, what got you in the first place? Well, it's funny. I don't know. It's kind of thin, actually. I, um, when I was a kid, my mother is very musical. And she was a music major in college. And she was the choir director at our church since 1960. And um, we had a junior choir when I was a kid. And so I sang in that. Um, and I took piano all through kind of middle school and junior high. And so I really enjoyed that. <clears throat> so that when I got into high school, though, we had kind of a, we didn't have a very good music program in high school. And I was in band, I played the trumpet, and I absolutely hated it. I don't know. And then so I thought, well, I'll do a different instrument. So I tried the alto sax. It was better, but I still, I just hated being in band. I don't know why. I hated it with a burning hot passion. <laughs> so when I got into the high school, I, I told my mom, I said, I don't want to be in, in band. I don't want to be in music. And they had a, the music program wasn't that good. So I just didn't do anything musically in high school. Um, so it wasn't until I joined St. Thomas Choir that I actually really started singing. Oh, wow. so, yeah. And I quit playing. And the other thing, Clint and I talk about this a lot, is I regret, one of my big regrets in life is having stopped taking piano lessons. I stopped taking piano lessons in high school as well. Because I wanted to be with my friends and I wanted to do cool things. And, you know, it's, 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 it's something I wish I had kept up with. It's a common story. So, yeah. Anyway, keep up with the piano. You'll regret it if you don't. <laughs> yes. Yes. All of you. Boys and girls out there. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so uh, what are some of your favorite pieces that we've done at St. Thomas? Either pieces or hymns, things that we do or haven't done? Or, yeah. 
Well, it's kind of hard to say because so much of it is so good. Um, Cantique de Jean Racine, which is a piece that we were supposed to do last week, but because of the situation, we weren't able to perform it. And um, it's very disappointing because I, the few rehearsals we had with it, it was just, it just sounded so good. It's just, it's, and it's such a beautiful piece. It's just, everything about it's just, it's emotional, it's dramatic, it's, it's pretty. It's a great, you know, everything about it's great. I really enjoyed Vince Peterson's piece that we did recently. And I'm in, I, as a general rule, Jeff, I, there's so much stuff that we're doing now that's just challenging and exciting. It's all good. So I know that you've served St. Thomas in other ways. In, in which ways, what have you done? Well, um, I've been on a couple committees. I was on the committee with, um, with Dean Larkin when, we were, when we, we were doing the capital campaign and we were doing all the acoustical upgrades. Um, so being an architect, they asked me to be on that committee. And that was really fun, working with Dean and all of the stuff we did, the new doors, the new windows, the, all of that. That was great fun. Um, I was in the vestry for a couple of years, um, which is a totally different side of things. Uh, enjoyed that very much. Um, Clint and I, back in the day, used to do a lot of coffee hours. <laughs> he was really into baking, and he would make gigantic coffee hours with, like, just tons of cookies. I'm so, sorry on that, because I know he's a great baker. He's, yeah, he's, he's, a, very, well, he's a good all-around cook, so. Oh, well. You're, he's you're feeding good. me very well during this. Um, I say you're benefiting. Yeah. Quarantine. Yeah. I would like to get more involved with valet parking at the church. I think that would be fun. <laughs> um, so what do, what do you do for your work and how is that going with the... Mm, yeah. Well, I'm an architect. Um, I'm uh, one of six owners in a firm. It's called Nadell Architects. We're based in West LA. We've been around for 45 years. I am the studio director in charge of the retail division, um, which primarily has to do with developer-oriented retail projects, shopping centers primarily. So <clears throat> um, I've been doing that for about 10 years. And uh, this whole economic turn down, I mean, everybody's suffering. I mean, everything's shut down. Uh, but one thing that, because we shopping center developers are our clients, you know, I was on the phone with a client the other day. He said, you know, all of my tenants are calling me and they're not going to pay rent. So our phones have been very quiet. We're, we are, all of our staff is working from home. Um, the owners are going in for a few hours here and there in the office just to keep things moving along. But, um, but that's been my world for, I've been doing that since 87. I moved out here. I got a small a job in a small firm in Glendale. That's what got me to California because I wanted to live in California. Where were you coming from? I was University of Nebraska in Lincoln. Um, that's where I got my education. My entire family kind of has this, it was kind of gravitates around Lincoln, Nebraska on both sides of my family. Um, I didn't grow up there. I grew up in Wyoming, in Buffalo, Wyoming. Um, but both, both sides of my family were all University of Nebraska graduates. And so I went to school there. And do you have any message that you want to share with the parish? Well, while you were keep away. keep up with keep up with your pledges. <laughs> um, uh, no, that's important. It really is. I mean, stewardship is 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 critical, and I think that we, it's easy. And even me, you know, I mean, with this with not being able to go to church, even I am feeling like wow, it's I'm kind of separate from it. But <clears throat> I just think that we, you know, we need to make sure that we stay in touch with one another. Um, and I think that the, the masses that are being uh, broadcast on Facebook are great, a great way to do that. And I hope more people can, can check in on that. There's been kind of a core consist, consistent group that's doing it, and that's great. It'd be great if, like, everybody did it. And I think as a parish, we just, we, we, do, uh, we do look out for each other very well anyway. Um, but I think we just need to make a concerted effort to just stay in touch with one another. Um, what you're doing here is great. And it's fun to be involved in that. And you're such a great asset and, and you and Randy and, and uh, Jeffrey and Ed and everybody has been, been great. And I think it's just wonderful that um, 
that we have platforms like this where we can stay in touch. So stay in touch. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Please be sure to follow us on social media for upcoming content. Until next time, God bless and take care.